Hello everyone. So in this video, I will be demonstrating to you some important things to know about Lab 3, about completing Lab 3 via your Achieve Lab simulations, and um, demonstrating how the background, the procedures page, everything actually looks so that you know what to do. So as always, you are going to enter the Blackboard lab site, which obviously, since you're watching this video, I pretty much can almost hopefully guarantee that you already have access. So always access your lab Blackboard site for lab um, related assignments, which are your labs. So here we have the instructions, of course. Um, if you've already done lab one and two, then you have already registered and you've already completed some labs, so you probably already have the hang of it. And again, here's the reminder on how labs are graded. So here is lab three folder, it's open right now. Uh, right now, what you're seeing does not have the pre-lab video, obviously, since I'm making it in this moment, um, but you do have the three links that you will typically see, which is your background, your procedures, and your lab assignment. Remember that the lab assignment is your action item. This is what you actually need to complete in order to receive the grade for completing the lab. And remember your lab assignment is typically composed of some multiple choice questions and some short answer questions. So what I do whenever I'm prepping to teach you about this lab, right? I complete the lab first and I go through everything and kind of highlight what are some important things that I want to point out. I always open up the three tabs. I just right click and open link and new tab, right click, open link and new tab, right click, open link and new tab so that I have everything here all on my browser ready. I don't have to go back and open a link again that I closed out. I just keep them all open while I'm completing the lab. So that's what I have here. I have first the background page and then I have the and then I have the procedure page, the actual lab simulation, which you see you can see I've already <laughs> begun to open things out, and then the assignment. So everything ready for me and loaded. Okay. So what is this lab about? Separating a mixture of compounds. So in chemistry, um, you will find that sometimes, let's say you're doing reactions, and I know not everybody's going to end up working as a chemist or anything like that, but let's say you were, <laughs> or let's say somehow this becomes, this is handy for you some, someday. Um, you'll end up with some mixtures, whether they're homogeneous mixtures or heterogeneous mixtures. You end up with some mixtures and you find that you need to separate these two. Here are some techniques that we're going to learn about that will help us complete that. So separation techniques use physical properties. Physical properties are the ones that are qualitative. You can see them. You can observe them. Um, but there's not typically like a number associated with them or anything like that versus chemical properties. It can be acidity, basicity, reactivity, flamm flammability, toxicity. Um, those are related to the chemical identity of the compound versus physical properties has to do um, with the macroscopic, what you end up having as a physical property. And they're measurable, um, but they're not related to the chemical identity, right? Like chemical properties are. Anyway, main idea, separation techniques use physical properties. So before we get into the calculations, I want to show you these separation techniques. So we have centrifugation, chromatography, distillation. And distillation sounds really fancy, but all it is is boiling. Um, you boil the mixture that you have and you would use this strategically. You're not just going to boil a mixture and hope for the best that one of them, one of the compounds like boils away. No, you use this strate strategically. 
where the two liquids that you have mixed together have different boiling points so that you heat it up, you boil one away, there you have the pure um, other compound that you wanted by itself. So that's, a, that's an example of something that's very common. Um, if you ever take organic chemistry, you probably will be doing this at least once. Evaporation, that's very similar to distillation, except, you know, it's similar in, in the idea that you have some sort of liquid and you want one of the liquids to go away. Here, you could have a solid and a liquid, right? You could just let water evaporate out of a mixture, right? Or you could have water and something else, salt for example, and you let the water evaporate away slowly and you end up with the salt at the bottom of your container, right? And there's other separation techniques. I was just referencing like easy ones that you can kind of think of because these are things that we kind of do in cooking, for example, or just we see this in our daily life. Like for example, I'm just thinking of something right off the top of my head. <laughs> um, watering plants we know that the water it doesn't necessarily just evaporate right it's taken into the plant but you water the soil and then evaporates away or it's like used up away so then uh, that's separated in that way so just think of, of like common examples um, that you can apply that'll help you learn this but go ahead and read and take notes on these different techniques. It's definitely very useful to understand these. So what will, be, what will we be doing in this lab? We'll be doing sublimation, decantation, evaporation. These are all separation techniques. Um, and one of these I know you have probably done in your life. Uh, decanting is where you, here it goes. Decanting is where you separate a solid from a liquid, where you carefully pour out the liquid and you leave the solid. So uh, let's say you are, you have a soup, right? And the soup has too much soup. You want more of the chunks, the chicken, the noodles, whatever. So you pour out some of the soup without letting the chunks come out, right? You pour it down the sink or something. That's decanting. So um, some of these are things that you see or you do in your daily life, which is really funny. But some of these are, are new techniques that you're going to learn about. So sublimation, this has to do with volatility. So again, I'll let you explore those a little bit more. I don't want to ruin everything for you. Okay, so that's the background. Procedures, how are you actually going to complete this? So this is in parts. Okay, so be careful. I highlighted uh, uh, something right here at the end of part one because the thing is, uh, part one and part two, they continue on into each other. So part one, you're gonna end up with a product. You're gonna use that product for part two. So be careful to not throw that away. So I'll, I'll point that out once we get there. So I'm gonna flip back between this, the virtual lab and the procedures because I want to show you um, kind of one thing at a time. So we've already entered the lab before. I'm not going to go through that whole simulation with you, but the evaporating dish, what is this? So that is something you may not have used before just yet. I believe you did not use that in lab one or two, but evaporating dish is right here. It looks like a little bowl with a little spout, right? In order to pour. Um, you can show the material in the container, so it'll do that for you. It'll show you like a cutout. And remember that you can always zoom in because, you know, it's kind of far away the way I had it. Um, so if you ever want to see inside of a container like this or the crucible, you double click it and you put hide or show. I'm going to hide it again. Okay, so that's the what is special about the... Um, evaporating dish. Next, the thermometer. So I believe you have used the thermometer in lab one, um, but in this lab, you, it is going to call for you to use it with the evaporating dish. That's not an issue. Just bring it over. Remember, you can toggle between the different 
temperatures if you're curious, but remember to always record to the proper amount of sig figs and to the proper unit that you are recording in. Bunsen burner. So the Bunsen burner is something I believe you have not used yet, um, but it's located here under instruments. And to turn it on, you just click it. If you keep clicking, notice you will notice that the color of the flame is changing. And that is because it is increasing in heat. So the closer to blue or purple it is, the more, the, the hotter it is, the increased heat, more intense. So if you keep going, um, you will see that it just turns off, but you click the little knob here to toggle between those settings. So that's about it for the Bunsen burner. Again, to observe the material, you always double click on whatever dish you are trying to view inside of, and then you click show material and it cuts away and it'll show you the powder or whatever you have in there. Uh, I highlighted step 14 because I want to remind you, do not throw out your evaporating dish, what you have, the solid powder you have in the wrap evaporating dish after part one, you will use it, okay? Right here on step four, it tells you pour the contents of the evaporating dish into the beaker you just weighed. So don't throw that away, okay? The next um, task or skill I wanna point out is being able to zoom in to view a solid when it's uh, within a mixture. So here I just have an example. This is not how yours will look, but, and it's actually not even zoomed in that much. There we go. Here you can see there's a little solid down there. It looks kind of just dirty, but it's a solid down there. Uh, so this is a mixture of water and a solid. Like I said, yours might not look exactly like this, but you can always zoom in to have a better view and you can see those solids within a mixture, okay? And then finally, I wanted to show you the decant or the fact that you can decant. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. So here I have a mixture in this beaker, right? I'm gonna rename it, this, this is my mixture. This is my empty beaker. Let's say I want to decant, right? Decanting is where you pour off the liquid while carefully not letting the solid come out because then you just end up with a mixture again in the other container. So to do that, you bring your mixture over your empty container and you, you're going to notice that you're going to have a few options of what you want to do. So you can decant and that will pour off all the liquid without pouring the solid that you had. And you'll notice here that we separated now this liquid from this solid, the best we could, obviously it's not perfect, but the best we could, and you have decanted. So that's something you'll be doing in this lab. So that's why I wanted to demonstrate that to you. And yeah, Bunsen burner already showed you that you can click between the settings. Okay, so you're going to follow the procedure, you're going to take notes, you're going to record um, when the procedure tells you to record masses or volumes or whatever it is, right? You always do that. You always record. And the reason for that is because you were going to answer some questions. There are follow-up questions. Now, some of these are very easy. So what was the mass? What was the mass of this? What was the mass of that? So as long as you record everything, you should be good. Uh, but for example, this one, what is the mass percent of NH4Cl in the original 10 grams? So how would you complete this? So this is whenever we go back to our background and your background always gives you the equations that you need, right? So what this problem is asking for is the mass percent, right? Right there. And what this is, is the 
percent of component A. So you have the mass of A, which is just whatever component you have to happen to be talking about, divided by the mass of the entire sample times 100. It's just the part over a whole times 100. It's just a percentage of that. So for us, this is NH4Cl divided by 10. So you would have to determine how much NH4Cl you have, which, yeah, I believe is question number four. So if you answer this correct, then you should be able to answer the next question. So you take that mass, according to this equation, you would take the mass of NH4Cl divided by 10 grams times 10. So just showing you an example of how your background always has enough information for you to go ahead and answer all the questions, okay? And there's more questions, like I said, this is for you to explore. Remember, there's always hints for you. There's always resources. Um, the hints, I think, are very helpful. So always use those and answer every question. Remember, uh, for the open-ended questions like this, to answer in complete sentences, because I will be going through and grading those accordingly. And I would say that's about it. So if you have any questions at all, let me know, email me, and I will answer you as soon as possible. And good luck completing this lab, and thank you for watching this video.